Welcome to Phoenix Bible Study. Today on Phoenix Bible Study, we'll be going over dispensation, the first dispensation, which is free will. But before we go into that, as always, let's start with Paul's Gospel. This is how you are saved, by believing 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried and he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. When you have faith that God has died for your sins, he forgave your sins, and you uh, that he is God and that he rose again on the third day, when you believe it, when you truly believe it, you're saved, there's nothing else. It's faith plus nothing. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get into the first dispensation which is free will so to kind of put this into context um, well before we do that why don't we uh, why don't we go over what we did the last uh, session uh, previously in the overview there was so much I would have liked to have covered but like many things um, it didn't happen quite that easy Many things I covered in the tapings that had technical difficulties, as I alluded, we just have to push through and get the video up. I taped five times with several getting almost fully edited before I found the issues. It was, it was frustrating. Uh, hopefully today's taping goes better. The batteries are brand new. Hopefully they're they're going to not die on me and the computer doesn't die and the camera doesn't die. Hopefully we're good. Oh, hopefully. So a uh, quick overview. Um, dispensation is the divine plan. Faith, grace, does not void the law, but instead establishes the law. But it is of free will. You choose to follow the law for reward. You are not, uh, you're not going to put God in debt. You're not going to work for salvation. Salvation is a free gift by believing that God did it. It's done. It's complete. All you have to do is believe that he died for your sins, was buried, rose again on the third day, as was prophesied in the Bible. So, where are then? Well, we, through faith, follow Christ's, um, and then by extension, Paul's example. And when we do that, we establish the law, as Paul says. So, um, there is no, you know, uh, as we were getting into in that previous episode with the, the you know, people who, who don't believe in dispensation and then also they believe that the church superseded the nation of Israel. It's false. It's fictional. Don't believe any of that stuff. Stay in the moment. And the moment is we are in grace and we are following Paul as he follows Jesus, the ascended Lord. And we're saved by believing Paul's gospel. Um, and then, so, to continue the overview, God's timeline, we go from creation all the way to eternity with a lot of dispensations in between. Uh, you know, creation is a totally different program than Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve which is free will, is a totally different program than Cain and Abel and then Noah and then so on all the way through. Um, if you have any questions about anything, leave them down in the comments. We'll get to them. Uh, so, 
God's dispensations. Uh, there's there's two main categories of thought. There's the the four ages, um, which some people adhere to, and and there's nothing wrong with that. But it, it kind of it doesn't show more granularity that it you know is very clear in the Bible. You know the the, the Holy Bible has a lot of granularity, and it's important to understand that that there is these dispensations in time where God has chosen to deal with humanity in a different way than he's dealt with them in the previous times. So, oops. Um, with the ages, you have the Gentile age, the Jewish age, the grace age, and the kingdom age. Just broken up, you know, with creation going into Gentile age, then the call of Abraham starts the Jewish age, the cross starts the grace age, the tribulation starts the kingdom age, and after a thousand years, we go all into eternity. Whereas the, the dispensations we're going to be using, which is slightly more popular in, in the community, is the seven dispensations, uh, which we start with free will, we're going to cover today. And then we go to conscience, government, promise, law, grace. We're down here somewhere near kingdom, but that exact day, we don't know. Then we go into the kingdom, and then after the thousand years, it's eternal. All right, so free will. The first dispensation from God, free will or innocence. In Genesis 2, dropping in at verse 15, we have, And the Lord took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou, in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Then Adam and Eve lived in the garden of Eden, free of toil. The only they only had one commandment: to not eat of the tree of knowledge. Now, I'm going to pull us in a quick aside because I don't want to spend a lot of time. Um, but you can see there's only one commandment. And how can anyone put Adam and Eve under grace and Paul's gospel? Paul wasn't alive. The gospel was still a mystery. Nobody's revealed it. Adam and Eve didn't know about it. There was no other humans. So, how do... How do this, anybody not see that this is a dispensation, that this is a separate set of instructions for Adam and Eve? You don't even have the opportunity to make a choice to eat from the tree of good and evil. Um, you just, there's nothing there. Now, we, humanity, at this time, do not know how long Adam and Eve were in the garden. It, it doesn't really give us any indication in scripture if they were in the garden of eden for one year one month one week one thousand years of our years or more but we do know and oddly that scripture will actually kind of uh, and i didn't pull the scripture but it, it, later in, in genesis we'll see uh, when we get back there, because first we're going to be in Romans and, and, and Paul's epistles. Um, but you see, in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Whose day? God's day. And as we see in scripture, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day, right? So in the day that thou eatest thereof, you shall surely die. Well, what happens to Adam? In about a thousand years, 900 and some odd years, he dies. It's, it's that simple. And, and a lot of people don't pull this out and actually point it out that, that uh, you know, we, uh, you know, the, the, that Adam did die in that day. You just have to look at it in God's time, not in man's time so much we could dig in here but again we'll just keep plodding along to make for sure we get through it 
Uh, Genesis 3. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, and he being Jesus, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman thou gavest to me to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. So here we have Adam falling from grace in essence. Only one rule, don't eat of that tree. But there's there's more here. Now, I'm, like I said, we can't really delve in. We'll get there when we get there. But why did Adam eat? But Adam was perfect. He knew what was going to happen. Why did he eat? He loved Eve. And that's a big thing. He loved Eve. He didn't want to lose Eve. He knew that Eve would die. So he was going to die with her. They were going to go through it together. And like I said, I, I would love to just dig in right in these verses. And we could spend probably a week there. But we'll, we'll go ahead and move on. Just kind of a brief glimpse of it. Um, and the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So here God is dealing with Satan, the serpent. And, uh, you know, it, it's just the continuation of those previous verses. Um and that, that remedy that was already there. But verse 15 is important because in you know, thousands of years, you're going to have Christ coming to earth and uh, Satan will bruise his heel and ultimately Christ uh, you know, kills the serpent. So, um, free will. We kind of got through it pretty quick, right? It's a very it's a very small period of time as far as the the Bible goes. Um, we don't know how long it lasted. It could have been thousands and thousands, millions of years even. We we have no concept of that amount of time. Uh, but do you see law here? No. Do you see grace here? Not in the sense that we're talking. No. I mean, it's grace. There's only one law rule. Don't eat of this tree. <laughs> That's a pretty easy rule. You can live in the Garden of Eden forever. Don't eat of that tree. How about kingdom or eternity? Again, no. It's a very specific time period. So, of course not. Law had not been given yet. And even more, Paul's gospel was still hid a mystery to be revealed. And we go Romans 5.13 For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. There's nothing there except for not showing faith by eating of the fruit. So, uh, let's go ahead and, and move into the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all you have done. Lord, help those studying your word to believe and find your peace and to live in your grace. Lord, I exalt and praise your Son, Jesus Christ, and bless your people. May your Spirit continue to keep peace on earth, guide those in power, and restrain all those who would defy your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask this of you. Amen. Amen. People, I thank you for taking the time to do a Bible study with me. 
Uh, we'll be back about a week again, maybe a little bit quicker. We'll see. And, uh, you know, make sure to do all those little things, you know, subscribe, hit the bell, you know, comment if you need to say something, all that stuff. So, again, I really appreciate your time and look forward to, to you know, talking with you in the, in the conversation and seeing you with the next Bible study. Thank you. Bye-bye.